Hello and welcome again to another video of creating 3D models using surface modeling. This is with uh, regards to activity 6.1b. So let's take a look at the 2D drawing. So this is a model of a bottle, water bottle. So uh, there are some unique forms or shapes to this bottle, especially the grip here. Okay, so one look, uh, having approaching this uh, uh, activity using surfacing will be actually advisable. Okay, because uh, you can start creating just the surfaces of the main body, do a revolve, and then at the same time, we can just have the grip being cut out afterwards. Okay, so let's create the main body here. And the dimensions for the main body are diameter 35. We have a 20 degrees taper here till the height of 15 mm. And then as we move upwards, okay, we need to change our view to the side view because it's unobstructed. We have this radius 120. And if we look further, there is a center point that has been indicated on the drawing. And this belongs to the R. 120 center and this center is actually 35 mm above the base of that bottle continuing we have a r300 that ends at about 80 mm from the base and then we moving on we have a radius 20 10 on this diameter 20 uh, mouthpiece uh, take note at the curve here, there are two edges to it. So uh, be careful because when there are two edges, you know that there is a change of surfaces to it. Therefore, there must be a straight line, just a small one, followed by the radius R20. Yeah, so uh, without further ado, let's begin. Let's go into our inventor. So this is how our model will look like. Okay, the main body. And the grips are as such. Okay, so let's not uh, waste any more time. Let's create a new file. Let's create using standard mm.ipt. Switch on all your planes by right clicking on it and applying visibility. First step, let's start creating the shape of it so the main body as mentioned just now we are using revolve function so therefore we just need to draw a portion of it or half of it with respect to this center axis so this vertical line or vertical axis will act as our axis of rotation so let's click on this plane and create a sketch so let's select line we begin from this origin here let's draw the horizontal piece that represents diameter 35 and then a taper with a 10 degrees uh, with a height of 15 mm okay so let's dimension them so be careful when you are trying to dimension this because it's given as diameter 35 uh, it's always best that we project our vertical axis first press the escape key and then select this projected edge and change this to a center line with this conversion, we can just dimension it from this axis to the point and we will get it as 35. Now this vertical height is 15 and the taper is 10 degrees. 20 divided by 2 will be 10. Okay, so we have conquered the base. Now let's do a little bit of the circles. There are R300 and R120. They are both tangent to one another. Okay, so to do that, let's draw a circle. The R20, 120, sorry, is actually coincident to this taper point. Now let's dimension this first. So left click on this circle. 
because it's a complete circle, it will always uh, inventor will provide you as a diameter dimensioning mode. So to dimension in radius mode, right mouse click, dimension type, and select radius. Let's change this to 120. And the height of the center to the base is 35. Okay, so my, my up or my circle has been fully constrained. So let's move on. Create another circle. This time uh, radius 300. So therefore I need a larger circle. Just do an approximation. There's no need to uh, be exact in this case. So again, dimension them. This is radius 300. So again, this is a big circle. It will be dimensioned as diameter. So right mouse click, dimension type, change it to radius. Let's change this to 300. Uh, one thing I'm missing, my these two circles, my R300 and R120 must be tangent to one another. So let me press escape key. Using this center, let me drag to the this position here. I want them to be closer to one another. If yours was really this close, then fine. You don't need to move your center. Just for my case, if your center is so far, then reposition it before you apply your tangent uh, geometrical constraint. So apply here. Select these two arcs. And they are now tangent to one another. So let's press escape key. Uh, there's a lot of edges here, so let's ignore those first. Okay, I will reposition slightly so that I can draw my top portion. So the top portion, like I mentioned, after the radius 300, includes a vertical line, followed by a radius R20, and then another vertical line of 10mm, with a diameter of 20 So let's draw those line. Oh, I have exited unintentionally. Let me get, go back. Line. From here, drag it up. Now go back to circle. Zoom in a little bit. My circle starts from the center here. I can trim this top edge. And then create another line up to the center now. Now let's dimension it from here to your center axis. So be careful here. Uh, what we are trying to dimension is diameter 20. But if you were to click on just this axis, you notice this axis is a continuous line. You will only get it as a radius instead. So be careful here. Yeah, in the beginning we have converted to a center line, correct? So in that case, always drag it down slightly until you find this kind of center line. It needs to show like a center line. Only then when you click on it, it will be in diameter mode. Okay, this height is 10 mm. Let me trim my arc here and apply a dimension of 20 okay and then i have let's trim further since yeah i almost got it here i will trim the inside and i will trim this portion and oops might have cut it too much so let me undo first so let's adjust this a little because just now if you notice my circle is tangent away to the bottom here so you have to undo in that case so let's repeat again trim 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 this part now let's just check again press escape key to check so this is my radius 300 okay then this part is the radius 120 so i need to trim this portion here so trim one two three let's just double check oh i have an extra piece of arc here 
So let's just manually delete it. Okay, so everything looks all right. Okay, my my arcs are all, all very nicely uh, trimmed. So let's dimension it. So from the top here to the base, it's eighty. And now this top base here to the here one hundred and ten. So it seems like blue color in uh, any marine blue means it's fully constrained for my uh, visual style. But I have this at R300 that is not fully constrained. So let's try to tangent them together again. Okay, now it's tangent. Is it fully constrained still? No, it isn't. So let's apply dimension so it's always best to just click on the edge or the up or the line just drag it around just to understand what kind of uh, geometrical constraint or dimensional constraint that you are you have a miss so that then is easier uh, to guess or to 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 application you can apply the dimension here so it just happened that when i trim even though before that i already entered r300 when I trim this uh, value has also disappeared. So that's that's one way to check for your uh, for your portion. So now my sketch is, has been fully constrained. We can finish my sketch. Go on the 3D model tab and start my revolve tool. So click on revolve. Okay. So uh, because there's only one profile and close profile and the axis, inventor will guess that oh you are doing a solid modeling. So please remember to convert this to a surface mode. Okay, and now you can see some texture here. Okay, the curvature of your main body. So let's press OK. We already have our main body here. So it's good practice to go under this surface body folder, expand it, and now let's just rename the item here. So just click again, uh, click twice, slowly, then you can rename it. Uh, this will be main body enter uh, why is good practice to rename all these surfaces uh, because when as you go further you have created more and more and more surfaces so with this uh, re by, by renaming all the surfaces to what it's really for it's easier for you to actually identify them uh, as you go further so this is our main body now let's go into our drawing uh, let's create the hand grip a single hand grip so uh, okay wait before i go to the hand grip let me just go through a little bit different so if you notice this is a revolve function created by a revolve tool there is another alternative where okay uh, you can create using loft command or loft tool so what happened here I have created four four profiles. Okay, this portion one, this is second portion two, three and four. So they are actually uh, I drew twice means I draw on this plane once and then I mirror it, and then I turn uh, a sketch create another sketch perpendicular to that new uh, that old uh, sketch, and then redraw again another path and then mirror it again. And I have created some path here. So one, two, three. So that when I create the loft, the whole thing will follow. So let me just switch off my translucent uh, option. So you can take a look that is actually similar to the, uh, the design that we have created. So let me just off here also. You see? Uh, so you notice that this sketch or this mod portion that I have designed the top cover has really been revolved means there's a surface created but my base here has nothing being created so it just happened that uh, inventor didn't detect that edge so it's fine no worries but if you see my alternative uh, solution there's actually uh, there's no top surface and let's check the top bottom yeah there's no bottom surface you can actually see through the whole uh, main body of the bottle 
okay so maybe why not this uh, let me show you what i mean by this loft method so let me delete this loft command let me switch off all of this because i want to retain all my sketches now click on loft select my output as surface now my section will be one so let me just rotate so that it's easier to visualize so from here to here two okay you can really see the preview number three and then the last one number four uh, because this is an enclosed body uh, always remember to close the loop so that it will form one shot uh, it will it go back to the original portion okay now uh, as you do loft, you notice that uh, some edges did not follow the curvature or the curve portion. So you can apply rails and select these three circles here. Okay, and then we can press OK and have a look. How does it look like? Okay, so you see here, it does look like a bottle. Let me off my translucent. There, you have it. Okay, but uh, this method that I'm showing here uh, requires you to have a lot of sketches. So you see here, I have six sketches, no, five sketches here. Uh, the more sketches you have, the more control you have on the loft. However, with more sketches means more problem. It's more prone to some errors or uh, mistakes. Uh, having this method here, the Revolve tool simplifies everything because especially in this kind of bottle design where they are symmetrical, uh, Revolve is sufficient to do everything. Love method is more suitable when the shape of the item that you're designing is much more fluid and asymmetric. Doesn't follow the symmetrical uh, properties of certain uh, design. Then you will use uh, Love method. Okay, so in this uh, activity 6.1b, you can I try both method, okay, and then have a look or have a feel uh, which one is more suited for this kind of uh, question here. So let's go back to our uh, design here. We will create, just select a new vertical plane and create a new sketch. Now let's take a look at the dimension. This is the shape. We have a R10 and an R8, and the distance apart is 25. And from the base to the R10 is 42. There's also a tangent tangent radius arc of R30 to the R8 and R10. So let's carry on with that. So let me project my geometry here I will draw two circle one two another circle from the outside uh, so to prevent or to, to quicken your flow it's best that you just move towards a certain arc or edges with that inventor will try to guess and apply the constraint quickly so you can see here there's a tangent constraint has been applied so what's next i just need to apply another constraint above it so i don't need to apply tangent constraint twice now let's trim off this edge and i will mirror the r30 to the opposite side so let me oh, 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 here and press apply let me return the view with that i have that shape let me trim the inside and now dimension them. So this is it. Then thirty. The distance apart is twenty-five, and the distance to the base is forty-two. Okay, so all my uh, sketches are all fully constrained. So finish my sketch and apply extrude. And remember, please convert this to a surface design. Select my edge and drag my arrow to a certain distance. So if you notice in surface modeling, the distance we can assume to a certain length. 
as long your surface is longer than whatever shape there is you are allowed to move on further as you model out your design so don't, don't worry about the length just press ok as long as it's long enough it's fine now let's go back to our 2d drawing our 2d drawing have the same curvature but now it's 5 mm offset away from the inside shape so how to do that look out for this thicken slash offset tool under the modify panel so let's click this our output we want to keep it as surface so let's change it to surface now if you like to select our newly created extrusion surface one you notice they are separated individually so to select as a whole just change from face to quilt and now we can select as a full continuity and the distance is 5 mm away so take note if it's on the wrong direction just flip it over okay for mine is correct so i'll leave it as that and once it looks all right press ok uh, same thing uh, because there are three of this design around it so we need to array uh, do a circular array of these two surfaces surrounding it so before I, uh, I do that let me just rename it this will be the grid outer again this is just good practices if you do not want to follow it's fine uh, grid inner so our main body there's also two surfaces what I mean by that so let's go to the drawing if you notice this is the outer surface of the main body yeah and then suddenly there's an offset value of this body also okay so the grip has a slight indentation to it and where does the do we get this offset value of the body main body look out for section b slash b and you can find out that the distance of offset is 3 mm So same thing, apply the thicken offset tool. Make sure your output is on surface. Change to quilt. Select this as a whole. The distance is 3mm. And then let's swap it for the inner side. And press OK. Okay, let me just change back this to with translucent. So yeah, you can at least visualize with two surfaces within one another. All right, with that, I can actually name this again, main body inner. Now, we have created all our surfaces. Let's apply a circular base, a circular array. Uh, hmm, let's, let me think. This circular array, let me just do a little bit. So. The bigger one, okay, let me just hide some of it so it's easier to uh, visualize. So the outer portion, we need to cut out the inside of this shape. Okay, while the inner one, we need to remove the body itself. We just want to keep the inside of it. Okay, so let's do that. Let me do the inner first and then your color. So for this inner, uh, to trim, we can use this trimming tool under the surface panel. So from here, they ask you, provide your cutting tool. So this portion is my cutting tool. And as I move my cursor over the main body inner, you notice that there are some, some portion will be highlighted so what it means by that is whatever is highlighted is being removed okay so i want to keep the inside i will remove the out exterior main body okay, and if let's say you have uh, clicked uh, incorrectly just swap over right now press ok so i have the small segment of it so let's hide my inner grip so this is my inner grip portion okay now let's 
hide the inner portion let's switch on my outer so for the outer i need like i mentioned i need to keep the exterior but i need to trim off the interior here so trim this portion as cutting tool and remove the inside and press ok Okay, so if I were to off my grip portion, you notice that if you look carefully, there's a slight opening to this body now. Okay, so let me sh then uh, we need to create two more portion. So let's do a circular or uh, array or circular pattern. This is my feature. Right click, continue, select any cylindrical surface. Okay, here, here, here. Anything that uh, inventor identify as circular, you can use it as an axis. Placement item will be three occurrence. Let's take a look, revolve a little bit, a bit, just checking. Once you are happy with it, press OK. Now, so let me hide the original outer grip because we have already cut it out. We don't need to have that surface to confuse us anymore. Now, what's remaining is this portion trim off and this portion trim off. Okay, so there are several methods to trim uh, items. Uh, what I have mentioned is this trimming surface under the surface panel. Another portion is called the splitting tool under the modify uh, panel. So let me click on this split tool. Inside this split tool, there are a few options. You can split surfaces. You can also split body using surfaces. And you can also literally delete uh, the whole portion of a single body so for this case because there's no solid body yet we will just use i mean only the splits uh, face option has been activated so select our uh, cutting tool or split tool in this case and our face will be the portion here i will select it as a whole and select this body and press apply so let me just hide the surfaces first so you notice that it's slightly different from the original trimming tool let me hide my plane so that you have a clearer view so if you see here if i were to focus on the first trimming tool this portion here is white color it means there's no surface on top of it now on the second split portion okay that's using the split tool you notice if i were to move it perpendicular to your view or normal to your view you notice that there is actually a surface there but now it splits up the main body to this surface so a splitting tool uh, is good when you want to keep both of the surface and let's say along the way uh, you do not need that surface you can just use the delete face command select my face here and press ok and we get that portion to be deleted okay so just some options for all of you to explore next time as you go further all right so i'm missing out the last one so let me just switch on my last uh, external oh no outer grip uh, for simplification uh, sake let me just use the trim tool because it's much more simpler press ok and let's switch off the outer grip so we have the three openings for the grip now let's switch on our main body inner so we have created one of the surface we can actually do a circular pattern to the other area so let me show you whether is it doable or not okay let's try circular pattern select my feature select my axis three times and press ok so it's still possible but it needs a few times of clicks so let me show again eh? circular pattern select my inner feature so you notice that it's not highlighting the inner body it just highlight the main of the uh, inner body so do a first click uh, first left click on the second left click then it allows you to select that surface so left click again now you notice that my cutout of the inner body has been selected right click continue 
and select any circular body again as your center of rotation or number of occurrence change it to 3 and press ok and now we have our portion here next let's apply our patching tool so a patching tool means uh, it just create a surface to cover or to patch up certain openings so as you if you remember at the very beginning there wasn't any uh, base for my bottle here so let me show you example a simple example of patch tool so click on patch select my circular base here and you notice a, a small preview and then just press ok so let me just undo you see a little bit slightly clear when i redo you can see there's a change of color there so it means there's a new top up of surface if you're not sure just hover on it and you can see that shape of course on your surface body folder you can also see a new surface to be have been created so let me just change this to base so at least it's easier for me now if you notice there's this uh, like like a river here that is open there's no surface connecting the main body outer to the main body inner so with that we will apply the patch tool again so click on patch select our exterior body and now select our interior body they will try to form a shape that continues or merge the inner and outer bodies together so we can also change whether you want it to be a free condition means it's just sharp edges or you can apply a tangent condition means it will tangent to your outer control surface so if you look at our drawing it's required that you do a boundary patch with a tangency condition or tangent condition so let's go back to inventor apply to tangent condition and press ok and repeat this process for twice outer inner and then remember to change this to a tangent condition repeat the step patch one two convert the convert to tangent condition press ok and with that i think we are almost done so we are almost ready here uh what needs to be done is actually we need to uh, sort of stitch them together because they are made of different surfaces as you can see here they are all made up of many many surfaces so therefore we need to stitch them like like making a cloth you need to stitch the different material together okay stitch one two three four five six seven many more eight so the easiest uh, or the simple trick that I find useful for myself usually I just yeah move yeah, my cursor around rather quickly just to visualize uh, visualize where or which surfaces I have not clicked upon so let me show again stitch okay this is the main body there we go we go we go oh here we go here 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 okay it looks like everything has been selected we go we go we go and I have something at the bottom here that have not been selected and then press apply so because this whole thing is actually a, a a complete enclosure now it allows me to create a body a solid body so that's why a new solid body uh, portion or folder has been created here uh, you can of course specify to maintain it as a surface is still possible okay or a simplest fix here is just to delete my top surface here press ok so when i delete this top surface means i have a opening there let's stitch it up one okay two three four five six seven eight okay because if you look at our drawing the top is open while the base here is enclosed so that's why we need the bottom portion and press apply uh, it will not form anything because there's an opening at the top what you can do is 
apply the thicken offset so apply thicken make sure that you change it to quilt in this case we just use it as a solid body uh, with a thickness of 1 mm and the direction is flip and press ok oh. somehow it doesn't allow me to do ok so if that happened then I guess the previous solution will work Okay, so let's try again the other method. Stitch. Yeah, here, here, here. We will use it as a solid body. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course, I have not uh, added any uh, radius yet. So let's apply some radiuses. The top was 2 mm. The mid portion is 10 and the base here is 5. And we can use a shell command. Hopefully it works. Let's try. Select this top surface to remove uh, that surface. And the thickness is 1 mm and press OK. It's still not possible. Let's take a look. So there's some portion that is incorrect or causing the issue. Let's check with this boundary patch here. Okay, so the boundary patch has, even though we have applied our tangent uh, condition, it doesn't tangent itself or it doesn't look like it's tangenting to anything okay so let's uh, let's delete this portion and okay, let's try again from the inner now to the outer and let's apply a tangent constraint or tangent condition and now let's apply Now let's take a look. Okay, so let's convert the others also. Inner, outer, change it to tangent, press OK. inner outer tangent and press ok oh something is not right here there's an opening that doesn't look so nicely done so let me just remove this part uh -huh. okay so there's something that is causing the issue here so let's delete this surface and press OK. Uh, you might not experience this because from one design to another design, you may have slightly diff it may differ slightly. Okay, so that's why it's always good to try to troubleshoot it as you go along. So in this case, uh, I I come across this portion that has been created from I don't know where. Okay, so let me just trim off that portion and apply my patch tool again. So one, two tangent so with that i have a slight tangent to it now okay yeah there's a, a bit of curvature to it yeah it looks better now so let's try it hopefully it's uh, working let's stitch it now before i stitch let me just delete the top surface stitch again one two three four five six seven eight press ok all right looks all right okay the stitch is successful and now let's apply fillet to this surface this is 2 mm 
apply this is 10 mm if you notice we can also apply fillets to surfaces apply so here will be 5 mm okay with that let's thicken it select as a quilt the whole overall body let's flip it over and press ok and now we have our bottle okay, let me just double check if everything looks fine on the inside looks good we, we can see the the grip indentation here and we can also see some tangency oh, here let me just switch off all my uh, surfaces so i can see the main body you see this portion is tangent this portion is also tangent so that, that's what the tangent condition applies to it okay and that's for activity 6.1b so please remember to save your work before as you go on because uh, surfaces take a little bit more uh, processing power so it might uh, crash the software now and then okay so happy trying